Please welcome from Norwich, John. Across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, where it is familiar, black, silver, and blue, coming from Manchester and the Phoenix camp. He weighed in at nine stone, 13 and a half pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. He holds a perfect record, 21 wins from 21 contests. 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to the ring as a current WBO Fighting on the British rules, let me tell you what I expect of you. When you fight inside, make sure your shots are on the target area. No shots in the kidney or back of the head. Remember the defenders at all times, unless I should stop boxing to you. Touch gloves, best of luck to both of you. Everybody in the game has been looking forward to this clash with anticipation. Could it possibly live up to the thrilling heavyweight fight we just saw? It may do. Ricky Hatton there on the left of your screen. The 22-year-old star in the blue, silver and black. Up against Norwich's John Thaxton in the black and gold shorts. Hatton with the skills. Thaxton, the unorthodox fighter with the big hooks. Yeah, but you have to remember Hatton, one of the biggest talents in the game today, but he's only learned so much. He still yeah, there's see blood already, he is cut already. He's cut on that left eye. He's been done three times before, damage on that left eye. He needed six stitches when he fought out in Detroit a few months ago. And that is opened within the first 15 seconds of the contest. And it could be bad. The Faxton camp knew that that was a possibility. And they told John... Just getting a warning from Paul Thomas, but again, hits Hatton with the right hook on that eye. Adam, that's plans right out the window. Everything they've worked for, everything they've pre-planned before the first bail has just been wiped out with one right hook, which slices that eye open. Hatton will just have to do it on the seat of his pants now, just try to blast the Thaxton out of there now. Physically strong, John Thaxton but the better boxer is Hatton. Can he start using the body shots? Will he have time with that eye? Good right hook again from Thaxton. As I was about to say, Hatton is so good at what he does, but he still has a lot to learn. And the more I look at that eye, Adam, it looks horrendous. Mick Williamson, the expert cut man in Hatton's corner, has a very, very serious look on his face. He knows that is bad. It has needed about 13 or 14 stitches through his career, Hatton. It's been hampering him for one weakness. The openness to the right hand that Hatton has suffered. He's got everything to do here. He's boxing a bit more smoothly now, Hatton. I think he's now settled down to the fact that he's cut. He must have been shot when he felt the blood trickling down the side of his face. Found a bit of rhythm now. Yes, he needs to try and stick to his game plan, even with the cut. He likes to have a look at his opponents and then start ramming home those rib crunches. Faxon switches again to Southpaw. A lot more rhythm in what he's doing now. Faxon just swinging and hoping. Faxon started so well, landed some quality shots in the first minute of the round, but now he's kind of dipping down, shutting his eyes and hoping. Yes, he made that mistake when he fought Emmanuel Burton in Norwich. He can't be too wild, Faxon, now. Let's look at that eye. Mick Williamson goes straight to work. Billy Graham, lead trainer, concerned, obviously. 
that eye that was split open when he fought Gilbert Quiroz in June. It needed six stitches. When he fought Paul Denton in December 98, it needed five. And when he fought Mark Ramsey, it needed three. Right hook. Yeah, well, definitely, no, no question. I did not see any clashes of heads up to that point. The fight had hardly started, and I thought, is that a little red smudge? And terrible cut, terrible time, first round, and already it's pumping blood. And at that point, Hatton lost everything, lost all his composure, and the attack was, was really piling on the punches at that point. Mick Williamson said when he got back from Detroit, it will happen again. It's how Hatton deals with it. When he fought Quiros, he knocked him out in the second round. That was his answer. What can he do here? Well, Hatton only fights the one way, Adam, so I'm sure that that's what he'll do. He'll get his chin down, his hands up, and march forward. No use changing, trying to do things you don't do. Do what you practice in the gym. Go forward and try and get that fellow out of there. It's already open again. Baxton looking for the right hook. But he could go mad. Or hook mad on that side and leave himself exposed for Hatton's skills. It's, fa it's fairly obvious what Baxton's doing. Every, every punch he throws is aimed at the eye. Well, he got stopped on a cut in his British challenge with Jason Rowland. So he knows that that could be Paul Thomas's decision to pull Hatton out when he thinks it's bad enough. He mustn't get carried away, though, Baxter. Well, he's still boxing very carefully. I mean, he doesn't look, he's not thinking about winning the round here, he's thinking about landing on that cut. That seems to be his one plan. All he's throwing is right hooks, nothing else but right hooks, all aimed at the eye. Left to the body, tried by Hatton, who's unbeaten in 21 so far. 17 stoppages. He's being a little bit predictable, throwing the same punch time after time after time. He's going to run into a, a severe counter one of these times. Hatton bouncing on his feet. How can he react to the nightmare cut? Hatton hasn't really been allowed to be effective so far in this round. I think it's worse, Adam. I don't know if it's just the way the, way the blood has smudged on it, but it looks to me like the cut, the cut has worsened. Back to Southport for Thaxton. The switch hitter from the Ingle stable. Hatton must look for his jab, which he blowed hot and cold with in his last fight with Giuseppe Lowry. He beat the Italian, but he wasn't at his best. He's not, he's not defending the eye, which is a, a surprise. His hands are still low, as they always are. You would have thought he would have been thinking about the eye, but he's not defending it. Right counter from Hatton. Baxton looks solid at the moment. But the format kickboxer could be opened up by the better textbook boxing from Hatton. Interesting. Key Hatton's left eye, which became worse in the second round. Now that was a right hook on the eye then. I mean, Thaxton, as you can imagine, was very predictable in that round. Every punch he threw almost was a right hook aimed at the eye. A little bit predictable. But, uh, what a big chance he has of finishing this early. You can't blame him for taking it. Third round here, British light welterweight title, vacated by Jason Rowland. Ricky Hatton from Manchester calls himself the hitman in the Manchester City colours. John Thaxton from Norwich. In the black and gold. Trying to bully his way forward. He's upset with the cut. Can he have further success? See, I think a big problem for Hatton now, he loves punching to the body. But he, he's trying to do things at long range here. He can't go up close and work to the body and risk head bumping together. So he's had to change and he's hardly going for the body at all in this fight. Right hook from Hatton, but that eye looks worse. As 
Saxon switches to his left side. And he had a handful of amateur fights. John Thaxton can be predictable. He has five defeats. Hatton has to compose himself. He hardly a body shot thrown at him. He can't afford to get close to the round behind the elbow because heads are going to rub and the eyes are going to worsen. So this is long-range boxing which let's face it, Hatton is not really used to. He likes to get up close and flat the rib cage. He might have to risk that. No, he, he can't take the chance. It's too early in the fight. I mean, if it were the, the last half of the fight, fair enough, it's far too early. And this is paying dividends. He's coming out on top of these exchanges. Good right hand from Ricky Hatton. Starting to get through Thaxton's guard. Going for the left hand, right hook to the head. A beautiful punch, beautiful punch, beautiful work from Ricky Hatton. And Faxon took three or four there on the chin. He smiles, shows his resistance and resilience. But Hatton is going to work back. Faxon comes with a right hook. Just like Faxon's cut below the eye. I don't know if it's a smudge of Hatton's blood or if it's his own, but there's blood in his face now. Yeah, it looks a blemish. Yep, on the right cheek of Faxon, that will give Hatton encouragement. When he ups the tempo like this, he looks outstanding. Faxon's taken these punches well because these are full bloody shots, bang on the chin. Full credit to both guys. This is the fight we expected. Huge right hands going in from Hatton, left to the body. Now he's getting a chance to throw the body shots because Thaxon's slowing down. Screaming at John Thaxon there. Here's how the cut happened. Beautiful punching from Hatton. The fight has switched in Hatton's favour. Apart from the cut eye, you would say, not on easy street, but you would say he's, he's really got his shoe on the road and it's going his way. But the cut, obviously, a terrible warning. Huge success rate. A very big round for Ricky Hatton. Paxton, who was also marked under the other eye, Brendan Ingle in the corner was saying, you've got to use uppercuts and get behind your jab. That's what he's attempting. But Hatton, with all his amateur experience, on the bombs in the world juniors. Beautiful right hand from Hatton, bang on the chin. Paxton's taken these well. He's got a good chin. He has been stopped before. It's normally, and he's worn down. Once we're making lightweight, which he swore he'd never do again, fighting Colin Dunn. Back comes Thaxton. In a little bit rough inside now, shoulders jolting. The hand now is taking the chance and getting up close. He's looking for the body now. Yes, he's trying to work around Thaxton, who's become a little stationary. I think what good left. What he's doing now, he's landing a head punch to give Thaxton something to think about and throwing the second and third shots downstairs. And for a young kid, what he's doing here, the technique is spot on. His hero is Roberto Duran, who was pretty good at that sort of thing. He's kept cool despite the cut in the first round. He's holding up. And Baxton starting to run out of ideas. It's a little tiredness. A tired look in some of Baxton's punches. Now he's really blowing here. I mean, that was a tired looking jab he just threw there. He's feeling the pace. Yes, he's got such a great physique, John Baxton. But stamina has been a problem. Hatton <laughs> turns. Baxton. Again, looking for the wicked, quick left hook. Well, I think it's been a blessing, Adam, with an experienced referee in there tonight. He's let Hatton in his corner go on with the job. And we're having a thriller here. 
and the referee still keeping well out of the way here. Right hook and a jab from Hatton. Solid right uppercut, and Thaxton is being caught more and more now. Adam, he's taking these punches, but these punches have an effect. You don't throw the effect of these punches in this kind of fight. These will start taking the legs from Jonathan Thaxton. That was a beauty. I think they already are, Jim. He comes out swinging. Thaxton. Switching. Hatton. He doesn't know anything different, John Thaxton. And he's being outboxed. Ultimate title that's living up to all expectation. But is Hatton now starting to press home his advantages? He's now getting a chance to do what he likes to do. Get up close and switch from head to body. But with some good tactics, he's landing head punches first to left. Thaxton gets something to think about, then switching down to the body. Here's the sixth round, but, but fifth round, apologies. Thaxton quick off his stool. In the black and gold trunks. From Norwich, based in Sheffield, in the Ingle Winkerbank gym. Ricky Hatton shakes his head there in defiance. Trained by Billy Graham from the Hyde area of Manchester. Left hook, and right hand. Great for Archie and Thaxton still. That was a push, that was a push. Definitely a push. But the shot that landed beforehand, beautiful punches beforehand. Got him again. Thaxton in a spot of bother. This young man is top quality, Adam. The pressure he's under, the worries with the eye, and the way he's boxing tonight. Yes, he's dealt with it excellently, as he has with the few problems that have happened in his career already. I remember Pedro Turan coming over and giving him a fight. And there's been a psychological shift as well, because Thaxton, when he saw the eye in the first round, he must have thought, I'm going to be champion. No one can, can continue with that injury. So it's now switched. Thaxton, uh, Hatton's got over it, and now Thaxton's got the job to do all over again. And clean punches are raining in on Thaxton's face. He tries to bob and wave. Tired looks in his movements now. These thumping head shots he's taken are definitely having an effect. There goes another one, another one. Speed, volume, accuracy, and punch power too. Thaxton's punches, Adam, have not had effect, an effect whatsoever. Apart from the cut, not one effect on Ricky Hatton tonight. He's going right through them. Left jab, left hook from Hatton, and Faxon is dancing around on unsteady legs. He's cut two now, on the nose, top of the nose. He can't take too many more of these. These are sickening shots. These are all taking their toll, everyone. But he's such a fitness fanatic, John Faxon. He's even a gym instructor. He's up at 5 o'clock in the morning on the roads, but he's not as good a boxer as Hatton. That's well, the difference. Can't match the technique or the drive or the strength or the conditioning. It really, it hasn't matched. He's not matching him in any department at this moment, apart from sheer courage. Yes, courage too, like we saw with the heavyweights. Thaxton has plenty of that. We've seen that time and again. Got off the floor when he fought Mark Elliott. is really doing a number on the Norwich boy now. For 22 years of age, he looks a very seasoned professional, Ricky Hatton. Well, he is coming of age tonight, without a doubt. We still have a couple of questions about We hadn't seen him in this type of fight. We hadn't seen him turn around in this type of situation. First class, everything is done is first class, and he's getting better with every round that goes by. Look at the way he just keeps pouring the punches here. His balance looks perfect, leading with the right, bang, finishing on the left hook, switching to the body. Just everything you teach kids to do in the gymnasium, he's doing it on the night. The 1997 English ABA light welterweight champion who decided not to go to Sydney but to turn pro. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Because he is a real pro now. And these are sickening shots that Tax has taken. They're not knocking him out. They're not knocking him down, but everyone is a little nail. 
This could be John Claxton's last hurrah. Very slow off his stool. Tired. And being beaten by Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Too much class. Hatton wants to be careful just the first 15, 20 seconds of every round because Thaxon's going to come out fresh. Then just cover for 20 seconds, then go to work again because he is definitely stronger and in better shape at this moment than Thaxon. Just one point. Remember what he did to Paul Ryan. One left hook and Ryan was out. Hatton has shown a good chin though in his 21 fights so far. Unbeaten. Faction successful in 19 of his 24, but at 26, he needs a win here. And he's not looking at the moment like he's anywhere near it. A little left hand to the body again from Hatton. And Hatton's painting him into making mistakes. His boxing's becoming ragged because of the pressure he's under. What a great performance by young Hatton. His variety. The way he moves and turns his man, Ricky Hatton. Terrific that we have a boxer as talented as this in Britain. Right uppercut. How many punches have hit Thaxton clean on the chin? See, every one of these solid shots travel right down to the legs and take their toll, and you don't throw the effects. Every round that goes by, they'll be feeling heavier and heavier. Trying to pump out the jab, but there's no strength in it from Thaxton. He had Jason Rowland down twice early on. He was even blowing a bit when it was stopped on the cut forehead. Emmanuel Burton wore him down. That's what Ricky Hatton is doing. He's doing it brilliantly. Well, this is the last minute of the round we're in now, and this is where you see Hatton really going to work. This is the mark of a classy operator. Look at Thaxton's face. Right jab, left hook, uppercuts. The array of punches that Ricky Hatton possesses. Heart and guts, too, from John Thaxton. What boxing we've seen here tonight. I tell you what, a tremendous show of courage from Thaxton. These punches are bang on target, he is not flinching. He takes a breath there, though. And the last minute of the round tells you who's in the driving seat, and there's no question at this moment, it's young Ricky Hatton. Looks as fresh as a daisy, Hatton, despite the serious damage to the eye in the first round. You can see the, the grease just on the forehead there was where he was opened up by Jason Rowland. Listen to Brendan again. Use the uppercuts. Rowland from You've got to change, Brendan Ingle saying. You've got to change. We know that. But how much is left in the Norwich fighters' legs? Well, by hand standards, they probably dropped the plate, the pace slightly in the sixth round. So we'll see if he lifts it back up again or what. Another question mark, too, to add to the plot. This is the furthest that Ricky Hatton has been. The longest he's been taken is six rounds. Here we are in the seventh. The cut above the left eye reopens slightly. Faction's come out well. As well as can be expected. Yeah, for the first time, there's a bit, little bit of damage showing on the eye again. I can maybe just a little bit slower. Yes, some movement in the legs. Of Faxon tries to push Hatton back. He looked a bigger physical man when they got into the ring. He doesn't now. Benji's looking wet again. Yep, starting to bleed again. Faxon right hand walks into a jab 
surprise, the feint happened to come round the other side. Faction's done well. He's really looking ragged now, Thaxton. He's, he's, he's heart is keeping him pumping the punches out, but once again, Ricky Hatton looks the one in control. Slashing left hooks from Hatton. To the body and head. And Thaxton looks out on his feet. Bravely, he tries to come back with a right hook. But how much more can he take? It's amazing he's still on his feet. This is tremendous because these punches are bang on, full four shots, right onto the chin. He's taken them. An action-packed night here at Wembley. A phenomenal heavyweight fight followed by a breathtaking light welterweight affair. This is how good British boxing can be. They really want this. And just lifted the taste again in this round. A little steady around, then he comes back with this. He's fighting on instinct, uppercut from Ricky Hatton, and Paul Thomas looks on very closely. faxon has got nothing left now. Right uppercut again. Well, the referee has seriously got to look at stopping this fight, because Faxon is now taking unnecessary shots. It would take a brave referee to step in at this moment, though, Adam. Let's face it. Be brave, Jack. Yeah, the faction can't be screaming the place down. down. Away. You get He's worse than the injury. You know, bust his nose now. Okay, so, I mean, if the referee and stepped in at that point, he'll be brave with you. Come on. You've got to want it. You've trained for this. You got it? You've trained for this. You've bust up his nose. You let me. You let me tee off on you. There's no reason. They're still trying to motivate him. Another tremendously big round for Hatton. Just picking the shots up close. You can do it long range, you can do it up close, you can find the angles, you can find the target. More sickening punches. Landing bang on target again. again. Every one of these, Adam, sickening shots. How fast is taking them, I don't know. Come on, Jono, says Brendan Ingle. As his man goes out for the eighth round in the black and gold from the South Pole stance. Being outclassed by Ricky Hatton, the hitman, who's venturing into unknown territory in his biggest fight so far. And he only fought four weeks ago, Ricky Hatton when he boxed Lowry. Faxton has had since July to prepare for this. There's a solid right hook from Faxton. I don't know if it's worse than the injury. He's always got that one lucky chance. One huge swing could turn the fight around, but Hatton's looking too good. You get the feeling if Hatton could get him on the floor, that he would, he would keep him there. But he's just, blind courage is just keeping him standing in front of Hatton. The urge the eye is worse. Faxon forward, they've seen the eye, they're urging him on the corner. Marks under both of his, Faxon. The scars of battle. Incredibly brave ten stone men in the ring. And that eye is seriously bad now. This will really test the referee's courage here. Hatton so far in top, no referee would want to stop this. But he hasn't even asked the doctor to have a look at it at any point, Paul Thomas. He's put the trust in Mick Williamson in the Hatton corner. Faxon, unsteady, unstable. Trying to plant his feet and follow the hooks in. But the power just isn't there. Right hook left from Hatton. How is Faxon taking these punches? Oh, that was huge blows. That was the hardest punch of the fight. That was the one. And back comes Faxon. That was the perfect punch to the chin. Faxon's taken. Unbelievable. 
We've seen memorable fights here at Wembley. It makes you proud to be involved in boxing. Just can't understand how John Baxton has stayed on his feet. The determination. As Hatton continues to up the pace and ram the shots home. Yep, that was a beautiful right hook. You found a power for that one. We expected that to worst the injury, and it did. But how is Faxton taking these punches? I mean, I wonder if Hatton wasn't so badly cut, it's possible referee Thomas would have stopped this in his favour already. But he knows, as his corner knows, he's still got that chance because of the injury. But look at the work young Hatton is putting out here. Baxton throwing more punches, but the success and quality with Hatton. When Emmanuel Burton stopped Baxton, it was in seven rounds in Norwich, and it was the same sort of fight. He was taking too many punches. And he didn't go down in that. They push him out for war again. Paul Thomas brings them together. The ninth round, British light welterweight title at stake, and how they both want it. Paul Thomas had a good look at the cut just before he told them to box them. And another good move by a good referee. Give the corner the full money to do the job, then inspect the injury, not at the, the end of the round. Is there a danger that because Hatton's punches have not got rid of Baxton, he may get bored or he may get a little frustrated? I've seen that happening with fighters because they're, they're big punches. They don't have the desired effect when they're landing that they start to lose heart a little bit. But I've never seen any signs of that in this young man. He is full of the business. He's at the start of his career. He's on the, the bottom rung of the ladder. No way will he change his mind here. Certainly, a little clash of heads here, Adam. I hope that didn't worsen anything. The hardest fight of young Ricky Hatton's professional career. Still, Faxton blazes away with the right hook. Faxton a bit dangerous with the head here. Time out. He's going to take some points off you. Watch the heads, says Paul Thomas. The blood flows from the Hatton left eye, the cut from the first round. The Manchester fighter who's composed himself and got down to business as the consummate professional. Yeah, as I said earlier, he has come of age tonight. A young kid stepped into the ring, but it's a man now and he's performing like a man. Yes, there will be a worry over the skin with Ricky Hatton. It looks like there always will be. But he's not let it bother him. Baxton tries to muster up the strength to push Hatton back. The body shots, another one to the chin. How did Jonathan Faxton stay up through that? Solid jabs too. It's when the head starts to get knocked back with the punches, uh, referee Thomas has to start thinking, has it gone beyond it? I think Faxon's uh, hat and damage below the eye now. I thought he was near the end in the seventh, Faxon. But back he's come. And there's a bit more spring in the Faxon legs than there was a couple of rounds ago. Last 15, they say to him in the corner. Such a nice guy, John Faxon. They both are. Look at how much they want this Lonsdale belt. More courage, a credit to the game. Listen, man, John Oates, you start your zoo. You cut him dead and you let him off the hill. You know when you're rolling in front of me, you know where 
it to you. Don't let them up to over top. You're rolling inside and not throwing them in. You're too close for him to do it to you. Just keep on to that. Keep on its chance after that. Get your head right. Hold it off. Right up right, I'm right no, it's hand. All right. It's all right. You catch him. Right up the front right here. You'll do it, says Brendan Ingle. Blimey. Well, there are no signs. Apart from the injury, you wouldn't give Baxter any chance whatsoever. But as long as that injury is as bad as it is, with a couple of rounds left, he's got a chance. He's got Father yeah. Brendan, sons Dominic and John, all talking John Paxson up. But he looked a beaten fighter sitting on the stool. As he eats another, Hatton Wright. Hatton's getting to him earlier in this round, Adam. That could be the downfall. If he starts landing big shots in the first minute of the round, that could signal the end. Yes, Billy Graham has obviously said, go out and press home your authority. John Ingle says, back him up. I don't think Faxon's got the energy to do that. <laughs> right hook. Patton took that well. Never been in trouble apart from with the eye. But Faxton... Most successful spell here, yeah, most successful spell for a long time here from Faxton. As blood runs from his nose. The crowd are loving this one. The eye of Hatton has somehow held up. The interesting talking to Mick Williamson afterwards. They've kept him in it. Baxton's heart, courage and determination have kept him going. He must have trained so very hard. They're both in tremendous condition. Because things are going Hatton's way, he looks the better of the two at this moment, but they're both equally in the, the best of condition. Right hook from Hatton was effective. He's the lighter on his feet. But blood continues to stream from his eye. Amazing that Hatton can keep this pace going for the 10 rounds we've seen already. Almost 10 rounds. Again, vicious looking. Right hand. He said when there was a petrol strike on, he bite to the gym. That's how dedicated Ricky Hatton is. And he always watches tapes of his performances and talks to the critics at ringside and asks what he needs to improve on. A good young fighter. Yeah, well, I think I'd say better than good, Adam. What we've seen tonight has been nothing short of excellent from both of them. Still, Faxton tries to come at Haddon. He negates that uppercut and gets through the round. Hatton's, but didn't Faxton do well? Go back to work. Enormous success rate for Ricky Hatton. He's running away with the fight. Surely on Paul Thomas's card, landed. 240 punches nearly, and he's thrown less than Faxon. Yeah, he's more controlled, he's picking his shots better, his technique is obviously better than Faxon, but Faxon has matched him in every department when it comes to courage and will to win. Eight points ahead on Jim's unofficial card. The only one that matters is that of Paul Thomas. Faxton needs something huge in the last six minutes. Here's the 11. Hatton hits his gloves together as he was doing in the ring walk, psyching himself up. The youngster from Manchester. In his first major title challenge. He's won intercontinental belts, but this is different. He wanted the British title. He wanted to go the traditional route. And how 
John Baxton would relish it. But he needs a fight-changing shot. He needs to dent Hatton. And there's no signs of it. And again, that, Hatton's catching the early in the round. If this continues, again, it could signal the end. He usually catches him too late in the round to capitalise. But we're only in the first minute here. Yes, Billy Graham, I'm sure, has been saying, use that first minute. Jackson pushes Hatton off, and he scuffles back. Ricky Hatton, still energy in the legs. He must train like a demon, Adam, to set a pace like this for the 11th round. He must train like a maniac. Well, he's been working that body bag in Billy Graham's gym. And fair credit to Paxton, because no one else so far has managed to take Hatton's body shots or head blows like that. The amount of clean head punches Thaxon's taken in this fight, you actually worry about the rest of his career. Because uh, these are tremendous punches, round after round after round. Yes, he's absorbed so much punishment. The quality. Sometimes fighters have a fight they don't really come back from 100%. This could be one of those for John Paxton with the courage he's shown tonight. Yes, this is sapping every ounce out of Paxton. And Hatton still comes forward, unleashing his weapons from every side. And Ricky Hatton had never gone past six rounds before, so we know fitness and stamina, no problem. A tick in that department. What's the head, says Paul Thomas. Baxton stays on his feet. Both bloody. Right hand from Baxton from Hatton. Baxton wobbles. He nearly went down there. A huge right hook from Ricky Hatton. What is keeping this man up? He has nothing left. Left hand this time. And the bell saves John Baxton as he wearily goes back to his corner. An enormous right hook. And he had absolutely nothing left here, Adam. He was not a thing left, but his heart, and that kept him upright. Tremendous. I mean, at this stage, in such a, a, a grueling, sapping fight. That should knock anybody out. That was perfect, bang on the chin. Look at the effect, yet he stays upright. Unbelievable courage from Jonathan Taxton. Jonathan Thaxton and Danny Williams tonight have really shocked us and everyone in boxing. The courage and commitment they're showing to win these British titles. And you don't want to harp on about it with what happened with Andrew Colossa last night. But fighters who get paid a million and a half, two million, these guys are boxing their hearts out for the Lonsdale belt. It has been a thrilling, energy sapping, an intriguing contest. Hatton winning easily, but Thaxton showing the bravery of any true challenger to a belt like this. I think we'll amend that to Hatton winning clearly. Could never call this easy. That, that kid has given everything as well. Winning it clearly in points. But certainly nothing has come easy tonight. No, they've both worked so tremendously hard. It's just that Ricky Hatton has been a level above Thaxton. Still he comes. Left hook to the body. You get the feeling he wants to do this inside the distance. Ricky Hatton. And Thaxton will be hoping he can survive to hear the final bell. He may not. I'll tell you something else, Adam. At this point, I'd like to applaud the courage of referee Paul Thomas for letting Hatton go on. The first round, most referees would have panicked and called that off. Thomas had the courage to let it and look at the fight we've had thanks to that. Absolutely. Right hook from Ricky Hatton. Paul Thomas 
had his critics for the way he stopped Johnny Nelson's fight with Carl Thompson, but he's let this one carry on. And despite the blood gushing from the hat and left eye, which will need serious treatment on it, his punches and boxing have been first class. Still, he wants more, Ricky Hatton. How can he be fresh? Paxton trying to hold on, not surprisingly. A minute to go of what has been an epic battle for the British 10 stone title. Vacated by Jason Rowan, fought to the end by Ricky Hatton and Jonathan Thaxton. Hatton still has plenty left. In the last minute of a 12 rounder, a 12 rounder fought at this pace and he still has plenty left in the legs. Bouncing around, enjoying himself in there. Ricky Hatton, he's put on a masterclass of boxing. And in the other corner, the Norwich heart has been, well, breathtaking. Right and left in from Hatton. 11 seconds he's got to survive John Thaxton. Tottering on his legs. Hatton looking for one or two shots. The bell goes. They've both given us such a tremendous battle. But Ricky Hatton is the new... British like welterweight champion he came of age tonight he answered all the questions the eye went early and he kept his cool and his composure to outbox a brave heart in John Thaxton yep just to put the cap on a wonderful night's boxing here tremendous performance Thaxton walked to the referee at the end of the fight as though surely he didn't expect to get the victory but who knows I mean he felt it was hard he knew what he was putting into the fight maybe he felt he was doing better maybe, maybe referee Paul Thomas will be kinder on the scorecard than we've been but to me Ricky Hatton won it clearly let's see how Paul Thomas scored it there's Ricky Hatton so pleased the belt he wanted more than anything Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 extremely close rounds of boxing, very hardly fought rounds, please, a big round of applause for both these warriors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Paul Thomas scores the contest. John Paxton, 113 points. Ricky Hatton, 117 points. The winner and new Four rounds on Paul Thomas's card. Ricky Hatton worked Caravan Bass. There are his delighted fans who decked out in the Manchester City. Well done, Ricky Hatton. His hardest night yet, but in the immortal words of Evander Holyfield, each time the prize has to be worth the pain. And Hatton desperately wanted to be able to say he was a British champion. It has come to pass. how hard Hatton's camp told them that Saxton would give him Hatton's toughest test. And they were right to be ready for a tough one. This is a night where there are some big winners, but I can't really say to you that there is a loser anywhere. Nicky Piper, some thoughts from you, please. Well, John, it's a wonderful belt, the Lonsdale belt, best in the world, and John Thaxon, I must say, deserves it even though he lost. Tremendous performance. And I think we see a new star in British boxing tonight. His eyes are fragile, yes, but I mean, he'd never been past six rounds before. He's still a novice, and he was bouncing at the end of 12 rounds. Fantastic fitness. They are both covered in blood and glory. <laughs> and in the spirit, the true spirit of boxing, 
They're both going to sit down like mates and talk to Adam Smith. <laughs> yes, two of the nicest men in boxing who put on such a tremendous war for both of us. Well done, Ricky Hatton. First of all, didn't go according to plan in that first round. Well, no, it's, you know, like I found in Detroit a few fights ago, uh, got caught in like the first, the fight I even started and I was caught. And from about the third or fourth round, I was stu struggling seeing above the eye, so the blood was running into it. So, um, so I was trying, you know, my game is to mix it, but I was trying to use a little bit of distance as well to protect the court, you know, absolute nightmare again. And uh, I have to go and see a specialist again to see if we can uh, see what we can do. You know, it's no, no point in moaning about it. You know? John, that gave you encouragement in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, like taking nothing away from Ricky. Ricky fought for 12 rounds of that cut. My opinion is, no disrespect for Ricky, when I fought for the British, I had a cut there. It was not even as bad as that, and they stopped the fight. No groaning, he, he fought through it and he done well. And he'll probably go on to be the world champion, be a world champion. If I'll come again, I think I deserve a rematch or another chance at the British title. So, you know, I, I just got to wait, get back to the gym. Um, I thought I fought a good fight, I gave it me all. Um, but obviously, I think what went against me a bit was uh, lack of fights you know, with the trouble I've had recently. But I thank Crew Lab, all my sponsors, Asics and the Oasis. I'm back at the Oasis. John, you certainly gave it your all. The guts and, well, and courage. And you kept fresh and to your game plan the whole way. Well, I knew I could go, you know, for, for 12 rounds, you know, even though the furthest has gone in six, you know, the court was a body again. But, you know, going back to John, you know, John's done himself, you know, loads of credit, you know. He's, uh, he's shown that he's, you know, got a lot more to offer at this way. And, uh, you know, um, hopefully, you know, if I can hold on to the title, I can give John a return. You know, I, I, you know, I'll fight. You know, whoever. I'm not one who, you know, duck anybody. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fighter in here as well. Jim Watt says you're coming of age night. Well, yeah, it's, it was. You know, I, I, I couldn't have wished for more. You know, apart from the court going 12 rounds, still kept a good pace. In the last round, I felt so fresh. You know, bring back the days when they used to go 30 rounds. Yeah. Honestly, I, that that was that was great. I couldn't have wished for anything better than that. Apart from the court, obviously. You know. And you said on your feet, will we see you again? Definitely. Adam, you know. Dr. Adam, Junior, we Adam, said. I'm here. I'm, I'm, like I say, I trained hard for that fight, but I just want to do it again, you know. I, I was up for it, I think, with a few more fights, you know, getting back in the ring, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a lot better, but, you know, I thought I fought a good fight, a hard fight and a courageous fight. What and a, I say, you'll see me again. What a light welterweight division. You know, you've got John still proved his worth, you've got Eamon McGee, Shane Neary. Junior Widder. And you've got me, of course. Lord of the, the Dance here, you know. <laughs> Lord of the Dance. <laughs> Lord of the Dance. I tell you, I'm challenging you. I'm going to take that belt off you, or any belt you desire well, to challenge. I've on the line for me. I will fight you anytime. I'll tell you what, you want a brilliant fight. I'll give you full credit for it, right? Credit, thanks very much. Bad. <laughs> Cuts bad. You live through it. I'll give you credit for it. But I will destroy you. Well, thank you, Junior. But it's Ricky Hatton's night tonight. And John Thaxton's courage. Well done, both of you, for a memorable, memorable battle.